It's been a long time coming, but the finishing touches on the Hypercube are finally here! Let's take a look at the Hypercube 3D Printer's accessory pack. with the display mount. This is the common RepRap discount smart uh, display controller, including the card on the side. This particular mount is bare bones. It's a skeleton mount. It's uh, along the same lines as the rest of the 3D printer. It doesn't require too much plastic to get a functional part out of this. And this bracket is very stiff. This screen is not moving at all. Uh, basically, you're limited to the location of this mount on the frame to wherever your cables can reach. So, uh, my, my uh, ramps board is down on the bottom left-hand side, so I've mounted my display at the rear top. However, if you had longer cables, you could mount this particular display either at the front or even better, down the bottom at the front and also slanting down. It doesn't need to be facing upright. These particular mounts accept uh, M5 by 10mm screws and of course the T-slot nuts. The actual display is held onto the mount using M3 by 10mm screws and there's a little nut trap in there for an M3 nut. Next up is the X-Carriage cable mount. This particular cable mount uh, attaches to the rear left of the frame. It accepts two M5 by 10 millimeter screws and T-slot nuts. And there's also a channel within this mount to cable tie the cable loom to it. So this is a much neater solution than what I had previously where I simply had uh, this loom cable tied to the frame. And I've moved away also from the spiral cable management. This particular cable management has no strength to it, has no rigidity, so the cables were kind of free to kind of flop around depending on where the X carriage was uh, within the frame. And that had the potential to get tangled or caught up in the movement of the printer. But as you can see with this corrugated conduit which has a split down the center of it for you to easily pass the cable through this actually has rigidity it's able to maintain the nice arc which is what you want in a design like this so it doesn't matter where the X carriage is I can now move this for example to the front right and you can see the arc is maintained I can move it to the front left and the cable the cables aren't simply slanting over which is what was happening uh, with the spiral wrap this particular uh, corrugated uh, duct is 16 millimeters as an outer diameter and it has an internal diameter of 13 millimeters so that's what this particular X carriage mount is designed for it's up to a 16 millimeter external uh, diameter however as you can see uh, when you cable tie it down it kind of squishes it anyway so even if yours isn't exactly 16 you'll still be able to facilitate your cable management Next up is the stepped spool holder. These stepped spool holders accept two 608 bearings or skate bearings, one at the front and one at the rear. Now the bearings that I'm using here are flanged bearings. You don't need to use flanged bearings, you can just use normal bearings, but I've got quite a few of these, so these are what I'm using for this particular purpose. Uh, they rest on the 8mm rod or the axle for your spool. And because there's two bearings in here, you'll see that they're standing upright, they're not kind of slanting down if there was only one bearing, for example, at the Rear. And I've also uh, moved away, I guess, from the compact spool holder. I've gone to, to this design. This is approximately 20 millimeters in height. The diameter uh, starts out at 60 millimeters and works its way down to about 30 millimeters. So that covers a wide range of different filament holders. Uh, they're stepped in 3mm increments and it doesn't matter if the internal diameter of your filament perfectly matches one of these or not because it's going to be within 3mm uh, as worst case scenario. And the beauty about having a step design as opposed to a conical design is when you load your filament it'll rest on one of those steps. You can then push this side on, screw it down and it's going to maintain its vertical alignment with the frame unlike a conical uh, spool holder where there is the potential for the spool to be mounted uh, on an angle because the, it's curved it'll accept any particular orientation so this particular setup works for me however again all these uh, accessories for your hypercube are purely optional if you're using a different spool holder well that'll work for you this would have to be my favorite accessory for the Hypercube 3D printer. This is the ramps mount with K 
cable management at the rear. Unlike the original ramps mount, which was just simply an L bracket, it didn't take into account the leftover cable length from all the devices coming into the control board. So before I just had like a mound of cable, cable tied here, kind of dangling away, and there was no support and it was waiting to fail in some regard. This way, it doesn't matter if you've got no length, 10 centimeters of extra length or 20 centimeters of extra length, you can simply keep winding that remainder cable around the rear of the frame and then all the cables can then dart around the side to the front of the ramps board. And this is a much cleaner design. This actually, for me, finishes the neatness of the actual 3D printer. Let me turn the frame around so I can show you what it looks like from the front. And they, there it is, you can see all the connectors coming directly from the rear. All the, there's, there's no cables in the way, it's all open access here now. It's, it's a much neater design. And it also accepts the 12 volt, cab, 12 volt cables from the power supply. And lastly, probably the most important mount is in regards to the power supply. So this is one aspect of the entire RipRap community that I was always apprehensive about, and that is access to the 240 volt wires, which are simply screw terminals on these power supplies. And they're exposed. There's always the probability of, you know, accidentally putting a screwdriver in there or just brushing your fingers past. It was always, it was always an issue with me. I was always cautioned around working on this live power supply, but now you don't have to worry about it. You can simply slot in your power supply. It's fully enclosed within one of these brackets. There is a fused 240 volt uh, uh, power supply socket, including a switch. There is an opening here so you can see the uh, uh, LED and also adjust the voltage. There's also uh, a hole at the base to see the LED, depending on how you have this particular bracket orientated. There's a cable uh, path for the 12 volt cables to come out with um, uh, some holes for some cable management to support the cables uh, exiting the particular frame. And this screws onto the 2020 at the rear right of the frame. It is absolutely rock solid. I wasn't sure if I would have needed uh, a mount at the top here to provide extra support, but it doesn't need it. It's quite um, quite rigid on this particular mount. And let me just show you underneath. I'll lift up the printer and have it facing on its front. And as you can see, the 12 volt cables are fixed to the rear of the mount. They're not going to be loose and eventually work their way loose within the particular screw terminals themselves. Uh, they come out at a 90 degree angle and they're parallel with the bottom of the frame straight into the ramps board. And something that's not part of the Hypercube accessory pack, but I'll share with you what I'm doing here, and that's in regards to the feet of the 3D printer. Previously, I've just been using these rubber squares where each of the feet would be sitting on, and I highly recommend some form of rubberized mat for the 3D printer to sit on, uh, mainly because the, the aluminium frame will scratch the table surface that you're on, and also it's just gonna make a lot of noise, a lot of vibration when the printer's printing quite, quite fast. But these rubber feet, I picked up a set of four of these for about two bucks from the local hardware store. They are rubber as well. They're 22 millimeters in diameter, so they fit perfectly around the 2020 uh, aluminium for the Z-axis up here. Now, to actually mount these, I've used an M6 screw, and the reason for that is these, these particular extrusions that I've picked up from Orarum, the internal diameter of the aluminium was just a bit higher than um, M5. They're about 5.5 two millimeters for the internal diameter. So I couldn't use an M5 screw to mount the particular rubber feet to it. So I ended up just drilling a five and a half mil uh, diameter through here and then threading an M6, or tapping an M6 thread through the aluminium. And that allowed me to use uh, 20 millimeter by M6 screws, which I also picked up from the hardware store. And I just made my own uh, feet for the Hypercube. So this cost next to nothing, didn't take too long at all. Um, yeah, so highly recommend uh, something like this. This also means I can move the printer anywhere now without having to worry about forgetting one of these square rubber mats. And another bonus of using screws as feet is if the particular table you're resting your printer on is not flat, and my particular table is not flat at all, you can see there's a, a couple of millimeters of gap there, you can simply unscrew one of the feet until it makes contact, and now the actual printer is rock solid, it's not gonna rock while it's printing. 
And with all those accessories attached to the Hypercube frame, I would say this is now, for me, a finished 3D printer. A much neater, cleaner design than what I had previous to attaching all these accessories. It's now much easier to move from room to room or even house to house because everything is attached to the frame. Nothing is now resting on the table uh, separate to the frame. And it just looks like an all-round finished package for a 3D printer. As always, all of these accessories are available for download on my Thingiverse page. The link will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.